Okay, so I know I've never done a movie review on this channel before because, well, it's a channel of video essays about video games. However, I am a nerd outside of just games, and if there's one franchise that has been with me for as long as I can remember, it's Transformers. So for that reason, I got my tickets to the early access showing of Transformers 1, ready to take myself back to my early childhood. And I knew I was going to have to talk about it at least a little. So here we are. Also, funnily enough, I actually wasn't that excited for this movie at first. I was pretty disappointed with the first trailer since it just showed so much humor. I have no issue with Transformers being fun and goofy. That's how it all started. But it's evolved into so much more than just that. And that first trailer just felt kind of soulless, I guess? It just screamed generic all ages action movie to me. However, after the second trailer released and more early reviews started rolling out, I could tell this had a lot more promise than I initially gave it. So, with that mindset shift, I was ready to go show my support to my favorite franchise of all time. And don't worry, I'll keep things spoiler free. These are just some of my thoughts on the film in general. So, I guess the real question is, did I like it? Oh, hell yeah. I'm very happy that I didn't listen to the me that only watched the first trailer, because this is definitely the best Transformers movie since the original 1986 animated film. In fact, in terms of story and overall quality, there is no question that Transformers 1 is simply the best Transformers film, although I still have to respect the original for all the precedent it set within the Transformers universe. Transformers 1 certainly is an origin movie, and there's no denying that. Thankfully, that is not to its weakness. Yes, there are brief moments that may feel a little like a generic origin movie, but those moments are few and far between. Every plot point is a necessary step the plot needs to take to put these characters on their destined paths, and the film is infused with enough spirit and charm from the franchise that it's representing that those choices all support the characters we've come to know and love over the past 40 years. The respect for these characters and stories are felt within every frame. And boy, if you've been a Transformers fan for quite some time, get ready for references. There are so many little tidbits sprinkled throughout the movie for fans to notice, more than I'm sure even I was able to find within a single viewing, and they don't really feel forced either. There are certainly some lines that stand out as references and strong running themes within the franchise more than others, but those themes still are clearly prevalent here as well, and have their own place. Longtime fans will be able to point out countless recognizable faces from the Transformers canon as well, and my assumptions are that these characters will see a lot more screen time in a sequel if one is greenlit. You could easily spend multiple viewings just trying to find every little reference to past series or the franchise as a whole, and that's something I find truly special. I feel like I can't really mention one of my favorite references, unfortunately. It isn't a spoiler to the plot in any way whatsoever, but I was so excited when I caught it, and I don't want to take that moment away from everyone else. So just take my experience to know that this movie really does have some great stuff to offer. Okay, I have to talk about voice acting real quick. We all should know by now that the franchise staples like Peter Cullen and Frank Welker are not in this film. In fact, it's mostly big name actors rather than voice actors. This now classic trope that a lot of animated films fall into had me a little worried about overall voice performances, but I was happily proven wrong. Chris Hemsworth was more than capable of holding the audience's attention as Orion Pax slash Optimus Prime, and it was a performance worthy of such an incredible hero in modern pop culture. Scarlett Johansson played the badass fembot of Alita 1 just the way you would expect her to, and she was a fun addition to the main cast. Keegan-Michael Key's Bumblebee was definitely the main comedic relief within the main cast, and for the most part was actually pretty great at that. There were some moments when his non-stop banter actually did get a bit annoying, but that's more of a writing issue than performance. And in the grand scheme of things, B was actually a very funny character that even did slow down when the plot needed it. And it was nice to not have yet another mute Bumblebee in the modern Transformers space. But out of everyone in the main cast, I have to give it to Brian Tyree Henry for stealing the show as D16 slash Megatron. Not only did he create a likable character in D16 that you hate to see go down a dark path, but his vocal performance as the character descended down that path was truly gripping. At my showing, it was not necessarily a quiet theater. Plenty of laughs and reactions from the crowd throughout the movie. I can say there is one moment in particular with D16 that brought the entire theater to absolute silence. His presence on the screen was truly massive, and I have a hard time believing that this experience wouldn't be the case with any other viewing. 
The animation is also a great highlight for the film. While it may not be quite as stylized as some other films like the Spider-Verse franchise, it has its own unique style and flair that really brings it into its own. As seen from the trailers, this iteration of the franchise does include some organic life on the surface of Cybertron, and that life adds for some great scenery and generally beautiful shots. There were also moments where transformations almost felt like a fast stop motion, and I say that in a positive way. It really allowed the viewer to experience the transformations and see the work put into those animations, not just some parts flipping around and magically creating a vehicle. As for overall thoughts on the film and its tone, I'm just very happy with it. Clearly, there is a fair amount of humor and fun within this film based on the trailers, and that's something that definitely shines through. It takes that lighthearted feel from the original show and infuses that back into this new take, even though there might be some cheesy aspects from time to time. It fits with what the franchise has always been based upon and doesn't shy away from that. And don't worry, this film is far from all jokes and lighthearted moments. While the franchise started as a very silly show that didn't take itself very seriously, we all know that it has continued to deepen its themes and storytelling with each iteration. If anything, Transformers has grown into a deeply political franchise in many aspects, going as far as taking on topics of classism and racism in approachable ways. This film does not shy away from that. In fact, it leans in. Transformers 1 takes its own spin on the franchise. It doesn't tell the exact same story that we've seen before, and yet it keeps all the heart and soul of what made all those past iterations so great. And that's something that I really respect it for. I'd love to talk more about this film. There are so many things for me to gush about as a Transformers fan that I wish I could share. It's genuinely a really great experience. But the movie doesn't even fully release for another five days or so, and I want you all to get a shot to go see it without getting a bunch of stuff spoiled. So with that, I'm going to call it here with just a pretty short synopsis. From those of you that follow my channel, hopefully you like this little video despite the changing content. For any of you new here that like video essays about video games and pop culture, I suggest watching some of my other videos and maybe even considering subscribing to the channel. I even made a video fairly recently about Optimus Prime. I think you guys would probably enjoy that. I'll be back soon with more videos and maybe even some more movie reviews if that's something you guys want. I don't go to movies on a super regular basis, but I definitely have my interests. Let me know in the comments. Have a good one. Now go boop a snoot.